my slide. Okay. Okay, so we will begin with the, kita akan mula dengan formula dulu. Sebab kena faham mana punya formula dan macam mana guna dia kan. So, the first one is a very common formula. Jika tengok dia darab, kita boleh tambah dia punya kuasa kan. Tak apa. Okay, check out here. What if saya ada A kuasa 3 tambah Tambah A kuasa 2. Apa jawapan? Ya. Yeah, this is one of the biggest trap. If you A kuasa 5, see what happen this one. Tambah. Ini tambah, ini tak boleh selesai. There's no answer for this one. Not say no answer. If you ask me what I will get, I will get A kuasa 3 tambah A kuasa 2. Sebab kuasa tak sama boleh tambah ke tolak ke? Tak boleh kan? If, jika saya tukar ini kepada darab, yes. Then most of you got correct just now, A kuasa 5. So must be very careful about sign at the middle. Jika sign adalah tambah ke tolak, kuasa tak sama, tak boleh selesai. Okay? Um, same thing to this one. Jika 3, kuasa uh, 2. Dapat berapa? Okay, kuasa dan kuasa kita darab mah, bukan kuasa dia mah. Sebab saya ada belajar beri tahu, sir, A kuasa sembilan sebab ini T kuasa dua, jadi tiga kuasa dua. Tak boleh buat macam ni sebab kuasa dan kuasa kita darab. Jika ini dan ini sama ke tidak? Sama ke tidak? Lain lah, sebab ini A kuasa 3, kuasa 2 masuk apa? Masuk A kuasa 3, darab A kuasa 3 kan? Ini adalah kuasa 5, ini kuasa 6. Dia lain lah. Okay, so you must know how to differentiate them. Okay, ini nothing special. Okay, jika kuasa ada pecahan. 8 kuasa 4 per 3. Jika saya tak nak guna calculator, apa jawapan ni? 8 kuasa 4 per 3. Good job. 16. Sebab jika kuasa ada pecahan, di atas pecahan ini adalah kuasa. Power. Di bawah pecahan ini adalah punca kuasa. Ini adalah punca kuasa 3. We call uh, Q root lah in English. Oleh itu, jika nak selesaikan ini, Punca kuasa 3, 8, kuasa 4. Punca kuasa 3 bagi 8, kita dapat 2. 2 kuasa 4, darab 4 kali, kita dapat 16. What if we have negative? Jika saya tak nak guna calculator, uh, tak nak guna calculator apa jawapan bagi ini? 8 kuasa negatif 4 per 3. Negatif masuk apa? Satu per ah. Then you copy the whole thing ke bawah. Tak ada kuasa negatif. You see? Negatif di kuasa masuk satu per. Then the whole thing at the bawah ini adalah 16 kan? Oleh itu, kamu boleh tekan calculator sekarang. is 1 over 16. So, kena faham apa masuk jika kuasa ada negatif. Jika kuasa ada pecahan. Pecahan apa masuk bagi atas dan bawah. Sebab recently the SBA dia takkan bagi nombor. Sebab dia jika dia bagi nombor, kamu boleh tekan calculator kan? Dia akan bagi kuasa P per Q. So that you cannot type in your calculator so that the loss of you cannot solve. So, therefore, if today uh, jika saya ada uh, whatever x Kuasa P per Q Kena faham P adalah kuasa Q adalah punca kuasa This one will be power This one will be root of Q So if I change to the Normal form will be X power of P Root of Q Okay Because this one always happen in the paper one One mark questions Okay 
Okay, jika punca kuasa 2x change to the index form, x kuasa berapa? Kenapa is 1 over 2? Yes, correct. Is 1 over 2. Sebab tak ada nombor dekat sini, means 2. Jika saya 7, x kuasa 2. Apa kuasa saya ada? Yes. So, tengok kuasa dia 2, punca dia 7. Do you see that? 2 di atas, punca di bawah. If I want to make it more interesting, I will say 1 over 5 x 3. X kuasa berapa? Tengok 1 over atau 1 per, ada negatif kan? Okay. Apa saya ada pecahan? 3 per 5. Yes. Negatif 3 over 5. Okay, so this is how we understand the kuasa and all that. Nice. So we done about 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, okay. This one is simple interest. It's very easy. P stands for principal. This one I think is a rate. T is for time. Berapa tahun. So principal is how, how much money you put into the bank. Hari ini jika saya masukkan bank 500. My P is 500. Saya... I, my saving is 500, then it's my principal. My rate, normally, what is the interest rate in bank now? Anyone know? 3 to 4%, all right? It's a standard. Okay, let's say we say uh, 4%, just if you can find some fixed deposit. Time is, kena masuk berapa tahun? We calculate in years, huh? not by month or by weeks or by days. So let's say, jika saya masukkan dalam 3 tahun. So, berapa sim Okay, first thing ah, uh, no bank in this world using simple interest. Bank always compound interest. Simple interest just for students to understand interest only. <laughs> in this world, nobody going to use simple interest one. Okay, so, saya nak kira dia punya interest adalah 500. 4% is 4%, 4 over 100. Tahun 3 tahun. Darab dia. Cancel the zero. Then this one will be 60. Apa masuk 60 ini? 60. Apa masuk 60? Masuk apa? Jika if you put in the bank 500, setiap tahun dia akan bagi 2. This is total. Bagi 3 tahun. So, 1 tahun berapa interest? 20. Bagi dengan 3 kan? Because simple interest, why they call simple? Sebab Every year, the interest is the same number. But compound interest, every year, the, the interest is not the same. And this one, not yet include this one. Huh? If you see the formula ketuju, they say uh, jumlah bayaran balik, or total payment. If you see here, does this one and this one look the same? So why is the difference of this one is, they add the principal. Means, this one, okay, they use for repayment uh, means you borrow money. How much you need to pay back. That's why they call bayaran balik kan. You need to pay back. This one, let's say, same condition. Sekarang now, you borrow 500. They charge you interest 4%. 3 tahun. So, 3 tahun kena bayar interest? 60. But you borrow 500, right? So, how much you need to pay, pay back in total? 500. Plus the 60, 560. So formula 7 is very normal and common. And 6 is super important. Almost every year, I also see this question. So formula 6. Same thing. Um, P is principal. R is uh, interest rate. Apa masuk N sini? Number of compound interest per year. That means one year they give you how many times of the compound interest. If today, I say you're going to get the interest every three months. Should I put three inside here? No. I need to see, see if every three months I get compound interest right? in 12 months, one year.
Compound how many times? Four times. So we insert four. If I give you compound interest every six months, okay, the number of compound interest per year. So if I give you compound interest every month, what is my end? So blast, huh? Off. Okay? Because in one year, every month they're going to Right. So one year of time. Interest per year. M will be I, I think some book right key la. This one I think in Malay is master or what? How many years? La? So let's say you put for five years, this one will be five. La. You get it? N and M is not the same, ah. N is how many time interest you have per year. This one you're going to say for how many years? So it's slightly different. And this formula, is this formula calculate for interest or not? Yes or no? What is your final answer for MV? Okay, you must be careful uh, because for this one, the answer is the interest. This one, the answer is interest plus your principal. Give you some example. So, jika saya masukkan principal satu ribu, sama interest rate empat percent. Okay, uh, every six months. Every enam bulan dia akan bagi saya interest. Saya masukkan dalam uh, masa saya lima tahun. Five years. Come, type this one in the calculator. Tell me what is your MV. Every six months, you will be given one interest. Interest rate four percent. Your principal is one thousand. You save for five years. What is the final answer? One one zero four point zero eight gan. So, but this one is about money, ah. SPN standard dual decimal place. Okay, money we always put two decimal place. Is this one thousand one hundred is your interest or no? Ini bukan interest ah. Takkan you put in one thousand, you get the interest like eleven hundred or satu ribu seratus. No, this number is P tambah interest. Sebab interest berapa? Karena guna nombor ini tolak sebab principal. Okay, so you need to minus one thousand one o four point zero eight. Masuk jika saya saving for one thousand into the bank. After five years, saya akan dapat interest one o four. So you see the difference between these two formula, girl. Ini dia akan bagi tahu berapa interest kamu ada. Tapi ini jawapan dia adalah interest tambah principal. So if you think this one is your interest, you fall in the trouble. Okay, you need to know the difference. Then very easy. Anyone know? Jarak formula ini dari formula apa? Yes, Pythagoras. Ini sebenarnya adalah Pythagoras. A square tambah B square. Do you see Pythagoras before? Yes. Sebab jika nak cari distance bagi A, kita nak tahu dia ber x ber distance. Oleh itu dia guna x2 tolak x1. Jika nak cari distance bagi B, dia nak tahu apa beza bagi y. So this is the reason they use y two minus y one. So benangnya ini adalah Pythagoras. Mid point senang je. This one also very important. Average speed. In Malay they call laju perata. So kena ambil jumlah jarak, not the jarak for one part. It's an all jumlah jarak bagi dengan jumlah masa. Then okay. I want to ask, macam mana nak cari pindasan Y? You you know apa pindasan Y right? Y intercept. Jika saya nak cari titik A, apa information kamu ada bagi titik A? Yes, X equal zero. Setiap titik di atas Y exit paksi Y, dia mian X mesti sama dengan kosong. Make sense? Let's say you you might say sir. I don't trust you. Let's see. 
We got some titik tegas sini. Titik pertama core 01 kan? Titik kedua 02 kan? 03 kan? See what they have in common bagi ini tiga titik ini. Dia punya x sama dengan kosong kan? Setiap titik di paksi y, x mesti sama dengan 0. Y saya tak tahu. How about pintasan x? Yeah, thank you. Y sama dengan 0. X saya tak tahu. So, jika nak cari pintasan x, y sama dengan kosong, pintasan y, x sama dengan kosong. Okay? And if you, okay, kita ada dua formula bagi kecerunan. Jika nak guna formula kelima, only for pintasan lah. Jika tak ada pintasan, tak boleh guna. So, kita will prove what is the difference between these two formula. Let's say, this is 6, this is 3. Okay, jika saya guna pintasan formula, senang je, tambah negatif lah. Kena ada satu negatif di depan. Y bahagi X. Itu je. 6 bahagi 3, kecerunan negatif 2. Siap. Tapi, jika saya mau guna formula keempat, kena ada titik. So, 6 ini, titik kita call it 0, 6, right? This one we call 3, 0, right? Then, 6 tolak kosong per kosong tolak 3, negatif 2 juga. Dua-dua formula pun boleh Cari kecerunan. Tapi, this formula design for pintasan. Kenapa? Penting. Sebab saya boleh tukar question. I say this is one, I don't know, one five. Ini bukan pintasan kan? Tak boleh guna pintasan formula. You need to use the number four. Okay? When you have the pintasan kan, you can use. Okay, we have a very famous formula dalam straight line. Design for pintasan ya. Any student know? Okay, ini design for gradient. Go one is x per tambah y per. Do you see this formula before? One of the most important formula in math and MF. If you taking mathematics tambahan, you will see this formula always. No more di bawah x pindasan x. No more di bawah y. Pintasan Y. Okay, if you want to use this formula, two things you need to make sure. Ini simbol mesti tambah. Ini nombor mesti positive satu. If I'm the examiner, I'm going to trap you. I'm not going to give you so happy one. <laughs> because if ini tambah, ini positive satu, it's very easy. I give you one example. Jika ini empat, ini tujuh. Saya boleh lakarkan graph in two seconds. Ini tujuh, Ini empat. Siap. It's very easy. Sebab ini di bawah adalah pintasan X. Ini adalah pintasan Y. Jika nak cari kecerunan dia, kita akan guna formula ini kan? So, kecerunan dia senang. Negatif tujuh per empat. See, I use two second, then I got the gradient ready. Okay? Tapi, if I'm the examiner, I will change this one to tolak. Okay, sebab ini formula designnya mesti ada negatif di depan. Ah, tapi ini tak ada extra negatif kan? Tapi ini formula dia ada satu negatif. Okay. Okay, jika sini negatif macam mana? If you still doing back the same diagram, ini graph salah. If you have the minus kena pindah ini negatif ke 7. Ini jadi tambah balik, itu negatif, saya akan bagi 7. Oleh itu, saya punya graph akan tukar a bit, go bottom, 4 and negative 7. Do you see that? Tadi sini negatif kan? Saya bagi negatif, bagi nombor ini. Dia jadi negatif 7. Do you see that? Then, this one is still considered minus, ma. plus and minus still is minus, right? I didn't change the equation. Okay, jika I don't like you, I'm going to make this number become 2. What happened? Yes, kena bahagi 2, bahagi semua, sebab kita punya objective to make this one into 1. 
Macam mana tukar dua jadi satu, kita bahagi dua. Bagi semua. Sini bahagi dua, sini bahagi dua, sini bahagi dua. X per 8 tambah Y per 14 sama dengan satu. Oleh itu, saya dapat saya ambil X intercept dan Y intercept. 14 dan 8. Do you see that? Jika ini ada nombor dua, you need to find a way to make it into one. If this is negative 2, I will divide negative 2 for every single one to make it into a positive one. And this formula is very famous. Okay? Cool? Okay. Uh, Pythagoras, nothing to say. Okay, come. Polygon. Hasil tambah sudut pentalaman polygon. Okay. Ini... Formula are designed to find jumlah sudut bagi poligon ah, bukan setiap sudut. Sebab apa? Example, saya ada regular polygon, uh, pentagon. Pentagon. Jika saya guna formula kedua, saya akan dapat jumlah formula bagi pentagon. Pentagon ada berapa, berapa side? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 kan? So, 5 tolak 2 darab 180. 540. Do you see? Bukan setiap sudut 540 ah, there's a different. So macam mana nak cari setiap sudut ini? Yes, so kita akan tukar formula ini per n. Okay, jika you write per n, kamu akan dapat setiap sudut. But only for regular polygon. Maksud setiap sisi mesti sama panjang. Jika sisi dia tak sama panjang, ini per N tak boleh guna. Ha? Confirm is wrong. Tapi, if I do myself, I seldom use interior angle. Because too long and too slow. We will use exterior angle. Anyone know the formula for exterior angle? No? Nobody know? Oh my god. 360 divided by N. Okay, tadi... Pentagon kan? Interior angle tekan calculator 108 kan? Betul? Jika saya guna exterior angle 360 per 5 Tepat berapa? 72 kan? Assume saya tak tahu ini jawapan Saya tahu luar dia 72 Then I know this 108 See? I find the 108 without using this formula Sebab ini formula pendek <laughs> I mean like short, shorter right? Bagi dengan N Ini nak cari sudut dekat luar Ini formula design cari sudut dekat dalam So You will find this one very useful If the number become very big lah Like 14 Or 16 or 20 Then you use this one The number will get quite big right And then you bahagi But both are fine Just tell you extra formula um, Okay Apa itu D dekat sini? Okay, diameter. Huh? Dua formula pun sama sebab diameter sama dengan dua R kan? Dua cecari sama dengan di diameter. So, therefore, they can change this one. Two and R, they make it into the D. So, it's pi D. It's the same thing lah. Nothing I want to say about this. Uh, very easy, very easy. Okay, this one mean parameter ah, huh? Bagi circle. Two pi R. Means the parameter outside there sahaja. Bukan semua. Okay, ini dua formula senang je. Okay, but we need to understand the concept lah. Panjang lengkok. Okay, sebab kita akan dapat satu circle kan. Biasa. biasa. Panjang lengkok or we call it art length basically means what? I only want to take the part of the circle. Center. So, you can see kenapa dia bahagi dengan 2 pi r. Sebab selulu adalah 2 pi r kan? The whole circumference is 2 pi r. Jika ini tita, ini tita adalah sudut bagi lengkok ini. Tapi apa sudut bagi selulu? 360 kan? So, they use a part of it divide by the whole. Here also you a part of it divide by the whole. Sebab semua sudut 360 kan? Then if you find this one makes sense, you don't need memorize, you already can do this formula. Same idea to sector pun sama juga. Sebab 
satu sektor area ini jumlah sektor adalah jumlah bulatan adalah pi r square kan pi j square for the whole circle sudut dia theta jumlah sudut 360 so this is how this two formula come from easy okay kai apa maksud diagonal or or perpendicular you know kai right lelayan Okay, ini adalah diagonal. Ini adalah diagonal dia. O oleh itu, jika panjang ini adalah 10, panjang sini adalah 5. Ini 5, ini 10. Saya nak cari luas dia. Senang je. 1 over 2, darab 10, darab 5. So, it's 25. So, we can straight away get the area bagi ini. Okay, for kite, don't try to find this kind of length ah. It's, it's no use. Use the diagonal. Okay? Trabezium. Macam mana tahu itu shapes adalah trabezium? Is this two tra trabezium? You cannot know until I tell you two parallel lines. Trabezium mesti ada dua kalisan yang selali. Jika tak, te, tak ada terselali, bukan trabezium. And this one is 90 degree or no 90 degree, it's the same. Both are trabezium. Just this one, they tell you height. This one, you don't have the height lah, you need to find. But both also is trabezium. Oleh itu, dia punya formula adalah sum of dua parallel line. Hasil tambah dua selali, A dan B lah. Formula dia sentiasa, A tambah B, darab dia punya tinggi. When they say H, ah, mesti adalah 90 degree. Ah. Jika ini 8, ini 6, with the 90 degree, mana satu adalah tinggi? 6 ke 8? <laughs> tinggi mesti ada 90 degree. Okay, so it's 6. Tak boleh ambil 8. Ah. Sebab 6, 8 ini not the perpendicular height. Dia mesti ambil tinggi yang serenjang. Is it perpendicular? Is it called serenjang? Yes, right. Okay. Um, okay, all this formula you just use. Lah. If, because if I start to explain all this formula, no way I can finish my slide. <laughs> Too many already. Okay, last two I want to say about these two. Okay, in this Q factor, uni boleh guna bagi panjang dia. We use for length. Ini used for the luas. It's not the same. Ah. Sebab, saya punya segi tiga boleh jadi bigger, right? Let's say ini dua, ini enam. Dia punya skew factor. What is the skew factor? You do not know until I tell you which one is object, which one is image. Yes. It, isn't it? Sebab, always image bahagi dengan object. Jika ini object, ini image, 6 per 2 skew factor dia 3 tapi saya boleh tukar <laughs> oops ini image ini object then skew factor different sebab image kena di atas object di bawah 1 per 3 jika skew factor in between negative 1 and 1 even they call pembesaran enlargement the image becomes smaller Remember, if your K is between negative 1 and 1, the image becomes smaller, even they call enlargement. Enlargement is not always bigger. Huh? Okay, if, if, if like this, you will get smaller. Okay. Um, okay, this one is to find the image of area of image, also used in transformation. Huh? Skew factor square, kena ada kuasa dua. Dalam image of object. Uh, Luas bagi object lah. Easy only. What is the difference between these two? Group theta and ungroup theta. Macam mana saya tahu? Apa itu group theta, apa itu ungroup? Group, ungroup theta biasa, dia tak ada table. Mea. Dia tak ada frequency lah. In more accurate, they will have something like this. 
This one called ungroup data. Group data, dia akan beritahu kamu dua, kamu ada frekuensi dia dua. Lima ada satu, enam ada satu, lapan ada satu. This one, do you see? You have the table. You have the frequency F. Ungroup data just give you a group of number lah. But they doesn't group in the table. Okay, when you have frequency, always use the second one lah. The other frequency, use the first one. Um, okay, these two formula is also the variant and standard deviation. They are the same. But if you ask my advisor, mana satu easier, always do this one is easier. Sebab apa? Jika nak guna formula pertama, kena cari min dulu. Jika tak ada min, you cannot do x minus min mah. Ini saya tak payah cari min dulu. I can straight away find the min on the spot. But this one, you need to find the min first, then only you can apply. So use the second one. Later, I will teach you how to use this one, okay? CCM PRY is the same with variance, just add a square root. But what is the meaning of standard deviation? Apa maksud CCM PRY? Satu maka dalam SPM. What is that? Sorry? Sum of, no. Okay, what is the purpose? Apa tujuan kita akan guna CCM PRY? Consistency, yes. Jika dalam kelas ini, semua memang matematik dapat 70, 80, 70, 80 is quite close to each other, like all, all the number then the consistency, I can say in this seminar, everyone score about 7, 70 to 80 then my CCM PRY akan, the number bagi CCM PRY akan very low the lower I get, mean more consistent jika group ini dapat A, group ini fail if I want to get the average sini CCM PRY akan number become very big. Do you know the tujuan there? If today, I'm the company, I make iPhone, like Apple. So, I want to ensure my CCM PRY is low or high. So that my customer satisfied. Must be low. Because if CCM PRY is low, that means the quality of the phone is very standard. Semua customer dapat, ini phone ini tak ada masalah. Jika kualiti dia CCM PRY sangat tinggi Your phone might have problem, her phone might be okay Not consistent Because dalam SVMD akan tanya what is the CCM PRY We want to know about consistency Okay, so if your exam result Like you already take your midterm exam, kertas percubaan If your performance consistent is better Or not consistent is better no, actually, you want to ensure it's consistent. So, Bob, you can see your increase in the consistent pattern, right? Yeah, but, okay, that one is very subjective. <laughs> I don't want to use that example. Okay, lastly, about probability. Uh, nothing to mention. Okay, so, upper any dot mean? What is the meaning of dot? Okay, complement or prime. Okay, means not that one. Example, jika saya buat a statistic Dalam kelas ini saya cakap, oh, okay, popularity bagi perempuan is 0.6 Mean we have about 60% of girl in this hall Jika I want to find bukan perempuan Okay, okay, we don't think about other gender, we mean in this world only have male and female, right? So, bukan perempuan mean lelaki kan? Apa popularity dia? 0.4 So 1 tolak probability bagi perempuan Kita dapat probability bagi lelaki So 0.4 Okay, this is very easy Yeah, we done Okay, let me one more formula In Inverse function uh, Jika uh, uh, Bukan inverse function pula Itu MF uh, Inverse matrix Okay Apa dia punya formula? Dan ini dua tukar tempat kan? Ini dua tambah negatif. Okey. Jika saya beritahu kamu inverse matrix ini tidak wujud. Does not exist. Means what? What equals zero? Yes. 
means AD minus BC sama dengan kosong. Jika tak wujud, bagi inverse dia, oh my god, my in, <laughs> I hope I write correctly, <laughs> mean AD minus BC equals to zero. Yeah, this one they asked in the paper two before. Kenapa AD minus BC sama dengan kosong inverse matrix ini tidak akan exist? Kenapa? Sebab any nombor bahagi dengan kosong tapa apa? <laughs> one divide by zero. What do you get? Use your calculator. <laughs> Math error. No number in this world can divide by zero. If any number divide by zero, the whole thing. In mathematics, we call it undefined. Tapi zero divide by anything, we get zero. Okay? <laughs> you need to know the basic math, man. <laughs> Is, if k bahagi dengan any number, I mean kosong bahagi dengan any number, tapat kosong. Ini bahagi tapat math error, atau we call undefined. Okay? So you can see satu, bahagi dengan kosong, kita tapat undefined. Undefined masuk apa? Inverse matrix ini tak ada. So you might say, sir, macam mana saya tahu? Okay, give you some example. 3, 6, 2, 4. Matrix ini. And soalan bang, uh, beri tahu cari inverse matrix. Then you do, oh, sir, senang je saya tahu formula. 3 darab 4, tolak 2 darab 6. Then here you will do what, whatever you like. Tapat kosong kan? When you type this one in the calculator, you have problem. Because calculator can never tell you any number. So therefore, how do I know? Sometimes the question will ask you proof. Atau tunjukkan metric ini adalah uh, no inverse. Then, I will pretend I don't know it's equal to zero. I will pretend. Saya tak tahu dia sama dengan kosong. Saya akan masukkan nombor je. Uh, 3 darab 4 tolak 2 darab 6 tapak kosong. Then I will say proven. Sebab semasa dia sama dengan kosong, saya tahu inverse matrix doesn't exist. Cool? Alright. Now we can finally start here. Um, okay, uh, straight line. I will say this one is important. Okay, in this seminar, I doesn't choose those like very complicated topic like insulin, taxation, networking. Because why? We only have two hours. And I want you all learn something, have a lot of mark. If you want to learn those difficult topics, I believe online a lot. Okay? So, we want to see some topic like this. Okay, let me go into the question. Telus. Ini nak cari keturunan LM. Check ini pintasan ke? If yes, use pintasan formula, bonus mark. Formula dia negative. Y intercept dia 3.5 kan? <laughs> Ini 7 kan? So simplify negative 1 over 2. Jawapan A. Okay? So, yeah, just read for it and then you insert the negative. Okay. Macam mana nak cari titik persilangan? How to find intersection point? We will do simultaneous. Okay, the easiest way to find intersection point, start one equation into another one. Especially if any MF student, if you have a cubic function, you want to find all the intersection point, sub the curve equation into the straight line. Always the same method. So, the easiest way is do the elimination. I think it's called something like hapusan or something like that, isn't it? Okay, so x tambah. Okay, but this is objective lah, ayah. Objective you can sub sub in the coordinate one by one lah, actually. No need to be so so smart. Okay, <laughs> so one, two. Saya nak hapuskan y kena tambah ke tolak. Hapuskan y. Simbol tak sama kita. Tambah. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> this is simple man man. <laughs> okay, ini tambah ini 2x tambah x 3x Ini tambah ini kosong 8 tambah 1 
8 tambah 1, 9 kan? So, X dia 3. So, ini tak ada 3 salah, tak ada 3 salah. Saya akan tinggalkan 3 bagi mana-mana persamaan lah. Uh, 3 saya tambah Y sama dengan 1. Y adalah negatif 2. Jawapan dia C. Uh, I use the elimination method. Okay? So, ada dua persamaan kan? I eliminate the Y. Sebab dia ada satu Y dan satu Y kan? Simbol tak sama, kita tambah. Simbol sama. Negatif, negatif. Positif, positif. Kita tolak. Okay? Okay, kertas dua. Ya. Yeah. All this question adalah kertas uh, percubaan this year. I took from online one, okay? Alright, nak cari nilai K. Q adalah titik tengah. Titik tengah kita ada formula kan? Masukkan dalam formula. Okay, actually no need formula if you understand what the midpoint mean. That mean 2 is the middle of 7 and K. Make sense? So 7 plus K divided by 2, we got the answer. 7 plus K over 2, we will get the 2. Because this 2 is the middle value of it, isn't it? So I will take this value plus this value divided by 2 to get this value. Then if you can understand that, K is negative 3, right? Is it? 4, 4, yeah, negative 3. Okay, so after I got this one, distance formula, I say distance is a Pythagoras, kan? P to R, ini adalah negatif 3. Okay. Pythagoras sangat senang je kan? A square tambah B square. Distan bagi ini, negatif 5 sampai 9. Berapa unit? Negatif 5 to 9. Negatif 5 to 0. It's 5 unit kan? Negatif 5 to kosong, kita tapan 5. 5 to 9, 14, yes. It's 14. Ini from negatif tiga sampai tujuh, negatif tiga sampai tujuh berapa? Negatif tiga tu kosong tu tujuh sepuluh yes. Then ya, you got the distance ten square plus fourteen square. Then type in the calculator, you got the answer. But ya, you might say sir, I just want to use the distance formula lah. Yeah, you can always you can do distance formula. So, negatif lima tolak sembilan kuasa dua tambah tujuh tolak negatif tiga kuasa dua. Yeah, you will get the same answer also lah. But I want you understand not just formula. Am I going too fast? Okay, okay, slow down. Come, let's go. Copy. Because a lot of question, you can see how many slides you got, right? And see the time. <laughs> I don't think I can finish it, but I will try my best to go through as many as possible. So, but in the titik tengah, in the titik tengah, titik tengah kita ada formula dalam front page. Distance pun ada formula kan? So the all the question with formula, I would say is easy. Some question got formula alone cannot do one, then it's hard. So the easy one, I will just do slightly faster a little bit. Ini senang je kan? X tolak X square Y tolak Y square. X tolak X kuasa 2 tambah Y tolak Y kuasa 2. Ini ada formula kan? Ada dua titik kan? X dan Y. X dan Y. So formula dia X tolak X kuasa 2, Y tolak Y kuasa 2. Tambah dia. Okay ah? I move on lah. Okay. Rajat 2 menunjukkan titik P, Q and S pada suatu sata katas. Kali selalu P, Q selali dengan paksi X. P, Q sama dengan 2 O, X. First thing. Parallel dengan paksi X. Apa information you have? Apa kecerunan bagi P, Q? Jika dia parallel dengan paksi X. Kosong, nice. Any line parallel to x axis kecerunan dia kosong. Okay. Jika soalan ini ask you to find apa persamaan bagi PQ satu maka. 
Pertama bagi PQ. Y equals to A. Sebab Y equals to MX tambah C kan. Ini 8 dia mesti sentuh dengan 8 kan. Kecilan dia kosong. Kosong saya, I don't care about X already. Because 0 darab X tapak kosong kan. Y sama dengan 8. Oleh itu, setiap titik di atas sini, dia punya Y nilai mesti adalah 8. Persamaan ini, call Y equals to A. Jika gradient 0, just copy whatever Y value you see lah. Just copy. Call Y equals to A. Ini adalah persamaan bagi dia. When they say persamaan ah, I see a lot of students write A only. They say persamaan dia A. Persamaan mesti ada equal sign kan? Equation right? Oh, must have equal sign. Mesti ada equal. Cannot write A ya. Okay? But this question is not finding this one ah. They ask you to find K. Dia perlu tahu kita panjang bagi PQ adalah double. Panjang bagi OS. O to S, what's the distance? Kosong to, where's, how many unit here? Six, Six kan? Ini adalah, ini adalah double kan? Six, dub, double of six will be? Twelve kan? Ini kosong, ini akan dua belas kan? Tapak K, dua belas. Okay, of course, uh, need some working lah. O to S is six. So P to Q is double of O to S. We get 12. So ta 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 is 12. Then K adalah 12. Uh, actually, you can straight away write lah. I didn't see it's one, one mark. I believe it's one mark, right? Yeah, it's quite co common sense. PS. Okay, ingat sini. Jika nak cari persamaan, mesti ada dua information. I don't care math or MF. Same, same always. Mesti ada satu titik dan satu kecerunan. Okay? So, P and Q, kita boleh guna P ke, guna S ke? Yes, no problem. Kamu ada kecurunan ke? Belum ada kan? Tapi kita boleh cari kan? Ada ini pintasan ke? Yes kan? Nilai ini lapan kan? Pintasan Y bagi pintasan X tambah negatif. Pintasan negatif, pintasan Y bahagi pintasan X. Tampak kecurunan. So, 4 over 3. Kan? Ini negatif sebab itu formula. Ini 8 pintasan bagi Y. Ini negatif 6 pintasan bagi X. Tepat kecunan. Y equals to MX plus C. Apa masuk bagi C? One, yeah. Y pintasan kan? Apa Y pintasan saya? Yeah, got the answer. Y equals to 4 over 3X plus 8. Okay, once you understand, you can see I spam less than 30 seconds. We done this question. So the important is you need to know all this shortcut. Lah, so it can help you do very fast. So you can save the time for difficult question. Alright. Okay. Um, okay. Segi empat selali. Parallelogram. Jika... Ini parallel dengan y axis. Apa kecurunan dia? Undefined. Or you can say math error. Okay. Tapi apa persamaan bagi PQ? Apa persamaan dia? X equals to 4. Nice. Sebab dia melalui 4 kan? X sama dengan 4. Bagi Persamaan PQ. But this question not asking that lah. I just want to test you. Apa titik or the origin? Zero, zero. Nice. Okay. See ya. Jika ini parallel dengan ini, kita boleh tapak Q. Macam mana? Sebab dia parallel kan? Dia punya gradient mesti sama kan? So, berapa unit saya move here, I will move the same pattern. Tengok. 4, 3 means what? Saya akan bergerak 4 unit. 1, 2, 3, 4. 3, pergi atas 3 kan? 1, 2, 3. Do the same thing here. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3. So, dia punya X akan dapat 4. Dia di 4 kan? Sini 4 kan? Jika saya pergi atas 3. 1, 2, 3. So, 4 akan bagi 5, 6, 7. Dapat 7. 
Okay, <laughs> maybe some of you get confused. Okay, so here is what because empat tiga kan. Okay, let me just sketch here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Then here I will do the same thing. One, two, three, four. So here is four. This is four, right? Tambah tiga. One, two, three. So you just imagine. Learn about translation in transformation. <laughs> if the uh, thing is four three, how are you going to bergerak? Ini empat unit ke positif kan? Ini ke atas kan? So ini titik zero four. You do this one. You get four seven right? Translation, you remember? When they are parallel, you can do like this. If not super hard to find coordinate Q. If you don't like about this method, you say, sir, I want to try my own method. Yes, you need to find this gradient, then insert this coordinate inside the gradient. Take forever, man. Okay, then. Nak cari persamaan ini. Kena cari dua ting. Kecerunan, satu titik. So, cari kecerunan bagi QR first or RQ. Ambil Y tolak Y. X tolak X. Okay. Y tolak dia punya Y Selepas tu X tolak dia punya X So akan dapat 3 per 4 Q out Is out pintasan Y Atau Y pintasan Yes right So it's a C Dapat persamaan Y sama dengan 3 per 4 X Tambah 4 Sebab Ini ada pintasan Y adalah C nilai kan? Sub into Y equals to MX tambah C. Alright. Okay, now. At the beginning just now, I say macam mana nak cari pintasan X? Y sama dengan kosong. Yes. Remember, ha, nak cari X intercept, Y will be zero. Gantikan dalam persamaan ini. Selesaikan dia. So 3 over 4x sama dengan negative 4, negative 16 per 3. Okay, you can use a calculator to solve this one. Okay, but I will just want you to memorize pintasan x, y sama dengan kosong. Jika pintasan y, x sama dengan kosong. Okay, then always if I see I get negative, right? Sometimes I will check my diagram, see makes sense or not. If I check my diagram here, in ni, dia akan intercept sama x axis tekan negative zone kan? Zero is here mah. This coordinate is negative, right? So sama Japan dapat negative, then makes sense. Because sometimes if I get 16 over 3, I know something wrong. Cannot be. Okay? Okay, next topic. Uh, this one is quite easy. Okay, I literally show you two different diagrams so that you can easily see the difference. Ini adalah jarak masa, laju masa. Or in English, we call distance time graph and the speed time graph. Okay, first thing is constant. Ini constant dalam jarak masa masuk dia tak bergerak dia akan berehat like lima jam. You can see two to seven right? He resting there, tidak bergerak bagi lima jam. Tapi ini laju se, uh, seragam uniform speed masuk ini tidak increase speed dia with the same speed. They're moving with a laju yang uniform lah. If you drive your car in a highway, you speed put at 110, you constant. Tapi dia bergerak. Ini tidak bergerak. It's not the same. And this one adalah constant speed. Means they actually drive the constant speed. Ini sama dengan sini. Sebab ini adalah speed yang constant. Tapi ini adalah pecutan. Acceleration, or we call rate of change of speed. I think Malay they have something like that. They call kada perubahan laju. Means I increase the speed. I from zero to ten to twenty to thirty increase the speed, but at the same rate, constant 
acceleration. Okay? But normally in SPM, gun, any mean you depart. Lah. You imagine, lah, I give you some example. This is your home. You depart to the school. So your school may be 5 km from your home. Lah. You depart to the school. Then you study at the school. You're not leaving school, right? You study here. You're going back home. It's very important is the distance go to 5 km, go back to zero, mean you go back to the origin. You go back to the same space you depart. If you depart from part, place A to base B, this one you go back to the tempat A. You kembali. Okay? But this one is nothing about that. Nah. This one is, I start to drive my car from stop. Here is stop, right? My speed is stop. I increase my speed. Then I keep the speed. And then I put my brake. I stop until my speed becomes zero. Do you see the difference? And for the area, the last year, anywhere last the other upper upper muscle mean nothing one for jarak jara muscle. But for larger muscle, last year, other jarak. So but average speed always ask in this question. Okay? Yes, let's check out some question. Okay, uh, you guys read for a while. I drink water. Okay. So, an ini dia hidden satu trap, upper trap for this question. If you read, this trap is very common in this kind of question. Unit. Dia punya unit adalah trap. Sebab apa? Tengok ini. KM per jam. Tapi sini dia bagi minutes. Because a lot of students will use this one. They say, Sir, I know how to find the total distance dia uniform speed kan? It's here kan? Yeah, then you find ini darab ini. Sebab you already know, right? For speed time, area is the distance, right? Then you darab, tak tepat jawapan. Or you tepat jawapan, salah. Sebab ini adalah minutes. Macam mana tukar minit ke jam? Bagi 60. Yes, nice. So, this one sini adalah 60. Ini adalah, ini tolak ini tapak 18 kan? 18 saya akan bahagi dengan 60 sebab saya nak tukar kepada jam. Sebab sini unit adalah dalam jam. So, uh, you will get what? 0 0.3 is it? Okay, you get 0 0.3. So, zero, nak cari luas dia kan? Rectangle, 60 tarap 0.3, dapat 18. Jawapan dia, B. Okay? So, for this kind of graph, always check the unit. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> Thank you so much. No, my answer is wrong. <laughs> so, Bob, they say from uniform speed, until he reached his destination. So, so uh, I need to read the question one more time. Move the car the period of 42 minutes. After he picking his, uh, his mom from her works. No, here also doesn't mean reach the destination because this is not the dis distance one. Because this one is, I travel certain speed. Maybe here because it stopped. Ah. I need to reach some, some place, I need to stop. Uh, da, da, da. No, no, going back home for Ziara Master. For distant time is going back. This one means decelerate. This one means I stop my car, lah. It's something like this. Make sense? <laughs> All right, then we try to find the triangle also. See if we have answer or not. Until he reached his destination. Yeah, his mom cannot jump out the car, right? So, so, so yeah, I, I think need to include this one also. Lah. Then this one is dual blast, bagi enam blue. 16 over 60, 0 0.2. Multiply six, 60, right? Half time, base time, height, triangle. 30, multiply 0 0.2, 6. Then if I include the triangle, it should be 24. 
Uh, do you know how to find area of triangle? Half time base darab tinggi. Tapak enam. Then, yeah, because here until he reached his destination, I think yes lah, maybe. After picking up his mom from her workplace. Okay, never mind, we move on. <laughs> yeah, because if I want to analyze, right, nobody can start the car from speed of 40, right? You must start the car from zero, right, if I want to go back to the real life. How, how to be 40 and suddenly increase to 60? <laughs> it's fine. So, but you need to understand how to find the area and all that. Lah. Okay. Perubahan laju bagi 8 saat terakhir. Here. 8 second kan? 5 to 13, 8 second di sini kan? So, dia nak perubahan laju ini masuk dia nak dia punya kecerunan. Gradient, use the gradient formula. Gradient formula mesti ada dua titik kan? 5, 18 dan 13, kosong. Tag dia punya unit. Second, second. Then I no need to divide anything. Okay? Suddenly ini minute, then mesti I will need to multiply 60 lah. But here they don't trap us in this question, so it's very easy. 18 minus 0. 5 minus 13. Masukkan dalam formula apa jawapan? Negative 8. Is it? Negative 9 over 4. Negative 2.25, right? Okay. And... Before I do, I already know it have negative sebab dia punya laju akan decreasing kan. So, other negative. Here is positive, here is negative. Next. Nyatakan tempo masa uh, insect fayan berhenti seketika. Okay, let's stop. Stop ber berapa lama? Okay, 12 minutes. Ya, yeah, sebab ini minit. Sini ada berhenti kan? Berhenti 12 minit. Calculate the values of the T if the average speed is 75. Okay. See, here hidden another trap. KM per jam. Tapi dia bagi, dia bagi minit. Oleh itu, kita kena tukar the whole thing lah. And jika nak cari laju putaran, kita guna formula kan. Jumlah jarak bagi dengan jumlah masa. So jumlah kita kena tambah semua lah. Sini ada satu trabizium. Sini ada lagi satu trabizium. Okay, tambah dia bagi dengan T lah. Alright. So let's find the trabizium first. This is 12, this is 20. Okay, kita cari ini dulu. Uh, 1 over 2, 12 tambah 20. Tinggi dia 15. Eh. <laughs> yeah, need to... This one is the... Change to hour. <laughs> Divide 60. Okay, never mind, we will change it. Bagi dengan 60, tambah 12, bagi dengan 60, tambah tinggi dia. Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes, distant time graph dia only live for 50 km. Masa dia T per 60. Sama dengan 75. Ya, sebab ini adalah jarak masa. Total distance travel 50. Okay, so... <laughs> I'm blur, sorry. Okay, so... Ya, yeah, we need to solve this one. Solve this equation. So, 50 over 75. 75, I mean... T over 60. Ya, yeah, then we can find it to muscle. 
50 over 75 multiply 60. 40. Then I want to see the T makes sense or not going back to the diagram. If this place 40, then it's fine. Jika saya tapak 15, then it's not fine. Sebab ini 20, ini mesti lebih besar daripada 20. Always refer your answer back to the diagram to avoid the current mistake. Alright, so... Yeah, we almost want to give you all a toilet break. Then we'll go to variation. Alright, one more question first. Alright. When you see Song Sang, mean di bawah itu pecahan. Okay? Inverse veracity at the square root, uh, square of x. Okay, here, actually I give you some example. Huh? Let's see about this one. No matter which one they give, kena tukar kepada persamaan before you can find the pemala k. Jika nak cari pemala k, mesti tambah k. K sentiasa di atas. Jika ada pecahan kan, sentiasa di atas. At the numerator. Okay? Never put the k at the bottom. When you see inverse kan, or song sang, you will put at the bottom. Okay? Jika bukan persamaan, is a relationship, then kita guna symbol ini. Dia macam alpha. We use this, we use this symbol, tapi when it change to equal, mesti tambah pemala k. Okay? So, then we will sub one group of the value to find k. I'll give, show you the first example. Then we will end here. Uh, not end here, we will toilet break. Okay. Uh, inversary dengan kuasa 2x, that's mean y sama dengan k over x kuasa 2. Sebab songsang kan letak di bawah. Then, kita kena cari K, kita masukkan Y 1 per 2, X kita masukkan 3. Then, this is 9 over 2 bagi K. Masukkan K punya nilai ke persamaan. So, Y sama dengan 9 over 2 per X kuasa 2. Okay, then we masukkan ini cari M. Y 2, 9 per 2 over M kuasa 2. Tukar tempat. M kuasa 2, 9 per 2 per 2. Tempat 9 per 4, 3 per 2. Siap. Uh, boleh tekan calculator lah. All this you just type in the calculator. The important is you need to understand song sang. Letak di bawah. Mesti tambah K. Sebab the relationship is not always one. It can be 2, 3, 4, any other number. So, kena tambah K. Dan first group of, of the information help you to find K. Selepas tapat K, baru insert second information. Okay? Don't put one. Uh. I got student in the exam, they just put one over X square. That will affect your result. Okay?